When I was a hiring manager looking to hire software developers, the first thing I'd do when I got a candidate's resume or CV for my British friends was to scan through and try to find a link to their GitHub profile. When I found it, I would immediately put down their resume and start looking through their GitHub profile. I was looking to answer two basic questions. How much stuff has this person built? And what technologies do they use to build that stuff? By customizing your GitHub profile, you're giving potential imp what technologies you've been using and what you've been building. So keep watching while I show you how to make a GitHub profile that will stand out and give you the best chance of getting a callback. So this is the GitHub profile that we're going to be making. You can obviously customize yours however you like, but I'm going to show you how to make this stats widget here, how to make this most used language widget here, how to get these technology badges here, and how to automate this blog post list with a GitHub action, and how to automate the videos list with another GitHub action. I'm here at github.com, and to get started, I'm gonna click this little plus button up in the top right-hand corner, and I'm going to click new repository. So when you go to name your repository, it needs to be the same as your username. So I'm going to call mine Tom A. Nagel. And you'll see this message here that says you found a secret. This is a special repository that you can use to add a readme to your GitHub profile. Make sure it's public and initialize it with a readme to get started. So make sure that it is public here, selected by default, and click add a readme file. Then click create repository. And you'll come to your repository and you can see that it has a readme and you can see the readme here. So if we come back to my GitHub profile, you'll see the contents of that readme up here. And at the moment, it just says hi there. So we can add whatever we want in here. This is Markdown, so we are limited by that. But you can add some HTML tags. So I'm going to get started with adding a statistic. So there's this repository called GitHub readme stats. And you can add widgets to your readme that look like this and it's going to gather stats from your profile and make an image like this so the way this works is they have this app here it's hosted on vercel and this is the code for the app so if you wanted to fork this and make your own you can do that so we can grab one of these links here and i'm going to grab one with a theme so i'm going to click copy here and then i'm going to come over to my readme and I'm just going to remove everything here and I'm going to paste this here and click preview. And you can see here that it's bringing in stats from this person's profile. So I can change this to my username and we can click preview again. And you can see now that it's bringing in my stats. So you can use any one of these themes that you think will look good on your profile. And you have a few other options as well. You can have a look through the table of contents to see how you can customize this. So you can see here, you can change the title color, text color, icon color, and all these options here. So at the top of my readme, I'm going to add a little message. And this is just going to say, hi there, I'm Tom with a little wave emoji. And the single hash is a H1. So if we inspect this here, we should expect to see a H1. Yep, we do two hashes, we'll get a H2. So there's markdown cheat sheets that you can look at to get the syntax for this markdown. So the next widget that I'm going to add is this top languages card, and this is from the same repository. So I'm going to use the compact version here. So I can copy this code here, come back to my readme and paste it in. And again, we need to change my username and we can preview it. And we can see here that we have two cards, but I want them to sit next to each other. So I can come back to the file and I'm going to make an image tag and I'm going to give this a source attribute and I'm going to self close it. And the source is going to be this link here. So this is the alt tag and then this is the source for the image in Markdown. So I'm going to copy that link and I'm going to paste it below my first one. And I'm going to put my stats card link in here. Need to remove that. And I can remove these two here. So I need to add an attribute to these and that attribute is align equals left. And I can copy that and paste it down for this one as well. And I'm going to do a width equals 47%. And 47% is the percent that I found gets them to sit next to each other without pushing this one onto the next row. 
So you can see here, these are sitting nicely next to each other. So the next thing I want to add is these language badges to tell everyone what languages that I'm interested in working with. So I'm going to grab this node one here. I'm going to paste it down here. And we need to make sure there's no indentation. And you can see here it has the node badge. This looks great. I'm going to grab the JavaScript one. Paste that below the node badge. And you know I love TypeScript, so I'm going to grab that one as well. So let's preview this. And that looks okay, but it would be nicer if they were next to each other. So let's come back to our file and let's grab this align left. And I'm going to add it to the first two images. And that looks good. The next thing I want to add is some blog posts that I've written. So I have this blog here that's hosted on Medium, and I'm pretty proud of some of the articles that I've written on here. So I would like to show them off on my GitHub profile. But every time I write an article, I don't want to have to remember to go over to my GitHub profile and add the article manually. So I'm going to use GitHub Actions to add articles from my Medium profile to my GitHub profile. So the workflow that we're going to use is this blog post workflow. And this is from the same author as the GitHub readme stats. So make sure you come over and give these repos here a star because a lot of work has gone into these. So if we have a look at the readme for this workflow, we can see how to use it. So we need to create a directory called .github. In that folder, we need to create a new folder called workflows. Then we need to create this blog post workflow, add the contents of this. And we also need to add these blog post tags. Before we go any further, let's save what we have so far and clone our repository so we can work in VS Code instead of on GitHub. So I'm going to grab the link here, I'm going to copy that. Inside my terminal, I'm going to type git clone. I'm sorry if you can't see this, Hyper won't let me zoom very much. I'll zoom as much as I can. So then I'm going to cd into that directory. And then I'm going to type code dot to open this in VS Code. Okay, so I'm in VS Code and we can see our readme here. So to preview your readme in VS Code, you can click this little preview button here and this will create a split window and it will render your markdown. So let's go back to the workflow and we can see what we need to do to get started. So we need to create a new folder called .github. So let's do that first. Create a new folder with .github. Inside that folder, we need to create a folder called workflows. And inside that folder, we need to create this blog post workflow.yml. Come over and create this file here. Let's copy the contents of this file. And we can have a look at what this workflow is doing. So firstly, we have a name, and this is just a name that you can change, and this is going to appear in GitHub Actions. We have a schedule, so we're using a cron here, and this says it runs every hour. If you want to change this, you can come over to Crontab Guru. Just search for Crontab Guru and click the first link. And you can paste the Crontab into here. And this is just saying at minute zero. And you can see that's at every hour. So we can change this if we want. We can change this to run once a week. So we can say day seven. So this is going to run at minute zero on Sunday. So we can change this to run at midday on Sunday if we want to. Let's run with that. I don't publish articles that often, so once a week should be enough for this. And now we have our jobs. So we have the name of the job. It's going to run on Ubuntu. And it's going to use this action here that is from the user that we saw earlier. And this is the feed that it's going to use. So let's replace this feed with my Medium feed. So if you're using Medium, it's just going to be your username on Medium slash feed. So let's save this and we can commit this and push it up and we should be able to run this workflow. But before we do that, let's quickly add the 
section for where the blog post is going to be added. So if we come back over to the workflows repository, you can see here that we have a title and that's telling us to add this blog post list start and blog post list end. And this is really customizable. You can see that there's lots of different things that you can put into here and lots of different platforms that you can pull data from as well. So let's add this here. I'm going to change the title here to my blog posts and I'm going to add a book emoji here as well. So let's commit this. And if you're wondering why I always prefix my commits with like fix or feet or refactor, it's called semantic commits and it's basically just a habit now. So I do it even when the repository doesn't enforce it. And we can push these changes. So let's come back over to our repository. And if we refresh this page, we should now see our action. So we see here, we see our GitHub workflows. We can come over to the actions tab and we can click on this workflow. And it looks like the action has run, but it failed. So let's try run it again. So you can click this run workflow and click run workflow. Okay, so it looks like our cron attribute is invalid. So let's come back to cron tab and we're just going to change this back to a star. And we're going to get it to run at every minute zero again. So I'm just going to commit this again. So fix cron tab. And I'm going to push this up. Come back to your action and click run again. And you can see here that we have one workflow queued up. And once the workflow has successfully run, it will turn green here. So we can come back to the readme. And you can see here we have a list of blog posts. And I've called mine my Bob posts for some reason. Let's go fix that, my blog. So I also have a YouTube channel, as you know. And I'm really proud of the videos I publish on here. So I want to show them on my GitHub profile as well. And while we're here, I have 659 subscribers. So if you subscribe now, you'll be helping me get to that 1000 subscribers and I would really appreciate it. So let's add a new workflow. I'm going to copy this one here and I'm going to paste it down below. And I'm going to call this YT post workflow. So there's a couple of things that you need to change in here. I'm going to change this from latest blog post workflow to latest YouTube video workflow. And then with, we can add a new option in here. So the tag that I'm looking for is just going to be YT. So you can see in this one here, the tag we're looking for is blog post list. So we can customize that here. So we can say comment tag name, and let's call it actually YT video list. And obviously we need to change the feed list as well. So that is going to be youtube.com slash feed slash videos.xml slash channel, uh, sorry, query string channel ID. And this is going to be your channel ID. In this case, it's mine. And let's change the description here as well. Update the readme with latest videos. So this looks good. So let's add this YT videos list to our readme. So we can add a new heading and this one's going to be called my videos. Going to open some comment brackets here. And this is going to be YT videos list start. We can copy this down here and this is going to be YT videos list end. So let's commit these changes here. And I have some conflicts here because I have the list of articles in the origins readme. So let's accept incoming changes and we need to add our videos list back. So let's say my videos, I'm going to add this tag again. So to prevent this, I should have pulled before I made any changes, but that's okay. And, and, and we're just going to stage these changes and then I'm going to commit. And then I'm going to push these changes up to GitHub. So if we come back over to GitHub, Click on actions again. We should now see two actions and this one's going to be latest YouTube videos and let's run this workflow. 
And if we refresh and wait for a little bit, we should see that it's queued. And it usually only takes about 20 seconds to complete. So the action's now finished. And if we come back over to our code, we can see now we have my videos and my blog posts. So you can go nuts customizing this and really show off who you are as a developer and what skills you have and what you've been working on. Please make sure you like this video and subscribe. Again, I'm trying to get to 1000 subscribers and your subscription would mean a lot to me. And it would be good for you to come along as we become better web developers together.